Yep, sit back, relax, and get ready to enjoy another awesome video by Captain Franklin Air. Please subscribe, like, and share with all your friends and all the people you hate too. So for today's find, here's what we call uh, boat pox. All these little bumps here, these are all blisters. You know, some of them are opened up, some of them are not. But you can see it all along the hull here. Best time to look for blisters, of course, is right after it's power washed, the boat's power washed and the hull is still wet. Then you take the light and just kind of walk along the hull and you can see them pop out. That's what all these blisters are here. Or what all these are, these bumps are blisters. So for today's find, we got a couple things going on with the exhaust system on this, uh, in a mid-sized sailboat engine. Uh, one, if you look here, you can see, uh, you know, JB Weld repairs on the stainless steel. You know, rednecks like duct tape, well, boaters like duct tape and JB Weld. You can see here where it's it's leaking and right around here as well, there's corrosion. So this patch, which has been put in here, the welds have probably started to, to go on the weld and that's where the leaking's coming from. So of course this would be need to be looked at. And the other thing is, the hose, badly deteriorated, age, it needs to be replaced as well. This rust, this red stuff on here, is actually the um, the wire reinforcement in the hose corroding, and that's where this rust is coming from. So again, it is in desperate need of replacement as well. So for today's find, we're looking at navigation lights, and this is a problem I often see with older units. You can see here the lenses are frosted and deteriorated due to age and UV damage. And this frosting will um, affect the visibility, the distance it can be seen. And we'll take another look on the other side, and you can see this side is frosted as well. So the recommendation here would be to replace these lenses. Okay, for today's find, we have uh, clear vinyl, the reinforced clear vinyl type hose is being used for a uh, engine raw water intake, so this is a fitting below the water line. This type of hose is not suitable for use on a fitting below the water line, so it needs to be replaced uh, with a suitable marine grade hose that is, and that's the recommendation for today, replace these hoses. So for today's find, we're looking at the zincs on a sail drive, and these are still serviceable, but this one here is loose, and it's not going to be providing the protection that it should be uh, if it's loose, so it, she's, it needs to be tightened up. So for today's find, we're looking at the zincs on a sail drive, and these are still serviceable, but this one here is loose and it's not going to be providing the protection that it should be uh, if it's loose so it, she's, it needs to be tightened up so for today's fine uh, something good not bad for a change so if your boat has an inverter like this right here one of the requirements uh, for an inverter on board is at the main AC panel you're supposed to have a sign that says warning you know in some verbiage in some fashion says the boat's equipped with an ac dc power inverter uh this is just to uh warn whoever's working on the boat that you know if they're working on the ac system or whatever ac being ac power not air conditioning uh then they need to know that there is an inverter on board that may automatically kick in so if they disconnect power from shore power and they turn off the breaker they need to be aware that there's also an inverter on board that could uh present a shock hazard if they don't take care of that as well and disconnect or turn it off. Okay, so today's find, we have some badly corroded hose clamps. Uh, these are on a uh, air conditioner raw water intake. Uh, so all, you know, not all hose clamps are good quality marine grade hose clamps. Even the ones that are stainless steel, a lot of times can have a the prowl here for the screw may be just regular old steel and not corrosion resistant at all. So anyway, the recommendation here, of course, replace the corroded hose clamps with marine grade uh, stainless steel or titanium hose clamps. So the word of the day is confined space. Well, I said it's more of a term rather than one word, it's two, right? 
Well, what does a confined space mean? Well, that means that you are not allowed to go into this space uh, unless, you know, it's opened up and certified by a, you know, a uh, gas-free, uh, certified by an engineer to ensure that there's no, uh, you know, buildup of toxic vapors in there or that there's enough oxygen in there to supply you, you know, to support life. That is what a confined space means. You can't enter it in there unless it's been uh, inspected and certified. Okay, so for today's find, <clears throat> we have a stern light, which is located here. And this would be the anchor light. And the owners have installed a mast here. And as you can see, from dead astern, you can't see the stern light. So this would be a problem. You also are unable to see the anchor light when it's lit in this aft uh, section here. So, of course, the recommendation is they're going to have to move the stern light and anchor light to a higher point to, uh, you know, so that it can be easily visible from a stern. And for the anchor light, uh, 360 degrees. So for today's find, we're looking at an inverter installation. And part of the inverter installation requirements are that the case or ground of the inverter has to be grounded with a wire that is the same amperage as your positive terminal. So the same size as your positive terminal. That's how big your ground wire is supposed to be. Uh, ground in the case is supposed to match this. And as we can see right here, here's the terminal lug for the ground. So this one has no grounding at all. So the recommendation, of course, would be install a ground wire uh, or a grounding one that's uh, the same amperage, same size as this positive terminal, providing power to the unit. So for today's time, we're looking at the uh, anchor and chain and road for a mid-sized power boat. Uh, one little side note is, of course, that the screw pin shackles are not mouse or secure to keep it from unscrewing. But in a good way, you can see right here, this is the bitter end of the... Uh, anchor road and it is uh, attached to the vessel and that's what you want you want the bitter end to be attached so that the uh, anchor and road don't uh, go over the side uh, by mistake so it just secures the road and anchor to the boat it's not meant to bear the uh, the weight of the anchor and road you know while it's in use but just to keep it from from going overboard accidentally that's why they call it the bitter end because if you see it going over you'll be mighty bitter so that's today's uh, 60 second survey. So for today's find, we're looking at the uh, the AC power system on a mid-sized power boat. This uh, boat has a uh, one inlet, uh, 120 volts, 30 amps. So we've got our main breaker on and the problem occurs when we try to turn on the uh, water heater. So we're gonna try to turn on the water heater and it trips the breaker. So that's an indication that there is something uh, not quite right with the water heater. Oh, but wait, there's more. Battery charger. Let's try to turn the battery charger on and see what happens. And it trips it as well. Um, and if we just turn on the other stuff, the outlets, you know, the microwave, all that stuff, it works fine. You know, just to show that it does work with the other systems. So uh, the recommendation here would be to check out the water heater and the battery charger to see what's going on while they're tripping. Uh, the main breaker. Okay, so the topic of today's uh, 60 second survey, pull rods. These are pull rods, or this is a pull rod right here. And what it does is when you have a uh, seacock that is a, in a difficult area to access or not easily accessible, you put these pull rods in here so that you can operate it remotely like you're doing right here. So the problem is You've got a second seacock over there and the pull rod for that is missing. So very uh, difficult to reach that uh, through haul uh, seacock to, um, to operate it in the event of an emergency, you close it or whatever. So of course the recommendation is uh, install a new pull rod. Okay, so for today's find, we're on a mid-sized power boat and we're looking at the helm. And down here we have the ignition uh, switch for the engines. And what you don't have here that you should have is right here is the emergency kill switch. This uh, emergency kill switch, when you pull this out, 
you know, it shuts off the engines. And it should have a lanyard, like a little plastic lanyard or tie that goes from here. And you clip it on to your pants or your shirt or whatever. And the purpose of that is, is if you get thrown from the helm, it pulls this thing out. And then uh, it shuts the engines off to keep them from, uh, from running around and the boat running over you or whatever. So uh, the recommendation here, of course, is to replace the missing uh, kill switch lanyard that should be right here. Okay, so today we're on a mid-sized powerboat and I'm gonna show you uh, an indication that the batteries uh, are possibly weak uh, and in need of replacement. Uh, so we've got our electronics on, okay? We have our multifunction display, which is very sensitive to uh, voltage drops and stuff. And what we're gonna do is, we have a windlass on board here. Here's the switch right here for the windlass. And the windlass has no rotor or anchor attached, so we can just run it. And what we're gonna do is, let's see what happens when we turn on the windlass. And here we go. See how it flickers like that? That's an indication that the batteries. Oh, and there it goes off completely. See how it's reset? That's an indication the batteries are probably not up to snuff and they need to be looked at and load tested and possibly replaced. So for today's find, we're looking at a cockpit discharge through holes for a mid-sized powerboat. And you can see right there that these hoses uh, are in terrible condition and they need to be replaced. The other issue with this is that these through holes are at the water line. So um, per ABYC recommendations, because they're in that area or that location, they need to have seacocks on them as well. So you can shut them off. And it, <laughs> as you look at these hoses, you can see why it's very important that you want to have uh, you know, seacocks on a through hole that's at or below the water line in case these hoses, these rotten hoses pop off. So that's what we're looking at today. The recommendation would be, of course, to replace the hoses and install seacocks. So for today's find, we're checking out the uh, coolant reservoir on the engine for a mid-sized powerboat. And as we open it up, we see that there is no coolant in here. It is completely bone dry. So we've got a two-fold problem here. One, okay, the coolant reservoir is empty, which is, you know, one issue. Uh, you need to put a coolant in there before you start the engine. But the other issue is, even uh, greater, is why is it empty? Is there a leak in the system? Is there a leak in the, you know, the coolant reservoir? I mean, these are, you know, it's just not as simple as uh, dumping new coolant in there and going on about your business. There's got to be a reason why this is empty. And that's what the recommendation would be. Find out why it's empty. Test the system. Put coolant in there. Check it for leaks. So for today's find, we're checking out the uh, coolant reservoir on the engine for a mid-sized powerboat. And as we open it. Okay, so for today's find, we have indications of uh, core damage, you know, rot, deterioration, delamination. Uh, these are the initial symptoms you may see when you're checking out a deck or a panel. This happens to be a deck panel on a mid-sized powerboat. You can see the cracking and stuff here. Uh, this is due to when people, when you have a core failure, a delamination uh, due to moisture entry, people walk on it and it starts flexing because it loses its strength. So we'll put the meter on it here. I'm sure it's going to be uh, high. Yes, it is. And you can tap it out. If you tap it out, it should sound like this, not like this. So that will be today's 60 second survey. Recommendation here would be, of course, to uh, pull the hatch off and repair it. Okay, so for today's find, we have an engine hatch. And this hatch is supposed to have this hydraulic support cylinder right here attached to it so that you can keep this hatch secured in a positively controlled in the open position. That way it doesn't slam down on you if you're in here working on the engine or something. So, of course, the recommendation here would be to replace this uh, cylinder, support cylinder, or reattach it and see if it's gonna work. Uh, these things are notoriously, uh, this size is uh, looks small for this hatch. So the recommendation would of course be to put a sufficiently sized support uh, there so that the hatch is positively controlled in the open position.
Okay, so for today's find, we're looking at the emergency boarding ladder. This is the ladder that if you fell overboard, then you would come here and pop this little snap off and you would use it, it would slide out to uh, enable you to get back on board. So in theory, it should just pop right down. However, this one's been damaged, it's been hit, you know, they've hit a piling or something and it's uh, it will not come out any further than that. It should slide out at least another three rungs. So it'll be down to here. This enables you to get back on board. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if so, and you want to buy Captain Frank a cup of coffee, please click on the thanks button below this video. All tips received, not spent on coffee, will be used to improve my YouTube channel and create even more awesome videos.